Hello, welcome to lecture 9 of module 3. This is lecture number 30 of the course. After getting equipped with all the necessary tools in the previous class, now we are ready to discuss the quantum mechanical Hamiltonian for a cavity optomechanical system. And finally, in this lecture, we will obtain the quantum Langevin equation for a cavity optomechanical system. So, let us begin. In the previous lecture, we studied the effects of environment on an optical mode in a febrepero cavity. We considered a single-sided cavity where one mirror is perfectly reflecting while the other mirror is weakly transmissive. Electromagnetic fluctuations from the vacuum outside the cavity inject quantum noise into the cavity. The cavity is driven by a single mode laser with drive amplitude omega drive and laser and frequency omega L. We have written down the Hamiltonian uh, and then went on to write this Hamiltonian in the continuum domain because uh, the vacuum could be modeled as an infinite collection of infine independent but oscillators. So, using this Hamiltonian, we have first worked out the Heisenberg equation of motion for the optical mode and the BART mode. And then we solved the BART mode equation and we got a solution for it taking going from uh, some initial time t0 to some instant of time say t and putting this BART solution into the Heisenberg equation for the mode, uh, optical mode, we got this equation first and also we have taken the coupling between the BART oscillator and the optical mode uh, to be constant for all BART frequencies and we have identified or taken this uh, coupling parameter to be like this uh, where kappa is related to the cavity bandwidth, we got an equation for the uh, Heisenberg equation for the optical mode where we have this A in refers to uh, the input uh, quantum noise that is injected into the cavity and this is a Langevin noise because it satisfies the characteristic uh, of Langevin, uh, quantum Langevin noise and we got couple of very useful relations then we also uh, got a solution for the BART mode taking uh, going from a final time t1 to some instant of time t that is we now went in the backward direction and that resulted in this equation heisenberg equation of motion for the optical mode here this quantity a out represents waves traveling out from the cavity into the BART. so using this uh, equations and formalism Finally, we obtain a very uh, important relation known as the input-output relation where we can have this uh, output field in terms of the input field and what uh, what is there in the inside the cavity uh, or, or the cavity mode. We finally applied uh, this input-output relation to work out the drive amplitude of the laser and we got this particular expression. Now let us consider the typical optomechanical system which is basically a febrepero cavity but with one of the mirrors movable. Say let us this particular mirror is movable so say it can get displaced to this position when it is not displaced the length of the cavity is say l and this displacement let me denote it by q earlier we denoted it by x and so this mirror is movable and also uh, this cavity is driven by laser with amplitude omega drive and laser frequency omega l and we know that the reversal of momenta in every round trip say if a photon hits the mirror with momentum h cross k so it get reversed 
and its momentum is minus h cross a this reversal of momenta in every round trip is the origin of radiation pressure force which we discussed earlier in this module the radiation pressure force is at the root of optomechanical light matter interaction now let me talk about the optomechanical hamiltonian who is in an earlier class we actually guessed it but let us do it more formally now and we will do it in somewhat details so let us now write down the optomechanical hamiltonian quantum hamiltonian we will assume that the motion of this movable mirror is very slow and the mechanical oscillator frequency uh, let me denote the mechanical oscillator frequency by omega m here with the suffix m for the mechanics this mechanical oscillator frequency is say much much smaller than the free spectral range and free spectral range is given as pi c by l which also we discussed in an earlier class now what happens is this that and why this assumption is made it will be clear to you actually when an oscillator oscillating mirror uh, oscillates it can convert incident photons uh, with frequency the cavity photon frequency say omega of let me now as denoted by simply omega of zero when this uh, photon uh, hits the uh, movable mirror the reflected photon the reflected photon can uh, the reflected photon can have a frequency that would be modified and it would be modified if we just confine ourselves to the first side bands then the reflected photon will have frequency omega uh, zero plus omega m or it may have a frequency omega zero minus omega m as you know it may be either blue shifted or it may be red shifted so this condition here uh, that this mechanical uh, frequency has to be much much less than the free spectral range this ensures that the moving mirror will uh, scatter very few photons from the originally uh, occupied mode at frequency omega zero uh, to the nearest uh, neighboring cavity resonance which by definition we know that it is a free spectral range away so because we want to confine ourselves to one particular cavity mode only that is say omega zero other optical mode are situated from here uh, by the so-called free spectral range the others optical mode would be separated the second one from here would be in this direction it would be situated one free spectral range away or the other one is also similarly it would be omega zero minus free spectral range so if we take this particular condition then uh, we can ignore all optical modes except the one with uh, frequency omega zero however as you know because of the length of the cavity uh, is not it is not constant omega zero is this omega zero is slightly modified now it's a function of say position of the oscillating mirror movable mirror and we all earlier we discussed it this is n pi c by l plus q the resonance frequency would now depend on the displacement q who is if if uh, this displacement is much much smaller than the length of the cavity under that condition we can write this expression as omega zero one minus q by l so the hamiltonian in the optomechanical system without inclusion of noise and external laser drive can be written very simply that would be h cross omega zero which is a now function of uh, position of the movable mirror this is the photon energy plus the mechanical oscillator energy which is a harmonic oscillator so p square by twice m plus a half m m is the mass of the movable mirror 
and omega m is its resonance frequency omega m square q square all these are operators this can be uh, also written as now if i put this uh, break it up then i will have h cross omega 0 a dagger a minus h cross omega 0 q by l a dagger a and i have this this is the energy of the this part is the energy of the movable mirror so this we can actually write uh, in a another form if i defined a quantity constant parameter say z0 this i define as omega 0 by l then i can write this expression as h is equal to h cross omega 0 a dagger a minus h cross uh, z0 into q a dagger a plus p square by twice m plus half m uh, omega m square capital omega m square q square now this particular term here it is proportional to the as you can see it is proportional to the number of photons in the cavity mode as well as it is proportional uh, it is multiplied by the mechanical amplitude q and this this describe as you know it is described the opto mechanical interaction so this term describe the opto mechanical interaction this Hamiltonian could be written uh, in a different form as well. So let me write that because this will teach us something useful. We can write it as S cross omega 0 A dagger A. All these are operators. Plus P square by twice M plus half M. Here M, M I have to write. M omega M square. Say let me take q square this term here then minus twice h cross z0 a dagger a into uh, q divided by m into omega m square so that's what i write here then i can write it as very easy to show that i can write it as a dagger a h cross omega 0 a dagger a plus p square by twice m plus half m omega m square um, into q minus h cross z 0 divided by m into omega m square a dagger a okay whole square so this is very simple to show now this particular form clearly shows that if there is no light there is absence of light if absence of light absence of light is there that means a dagger a is equal to zero right if there is no light that means a dagger a is equal to zero the mechanical equilibrium the mechanical mechanical equilibrium as you can see equilibrium occurs at q is equal to zero because this term would not be there and you will have the mechanical equilibrium occurs at q is equal to zero on the other hand if there is light that means if a dagger a is not equal to zero then uh, in the, that is in the presence of light the equilibrium point is shifted uh, equilibrium point is shifted to q is equal to it's very clear from this expression it is shifted to h cross z0 a dagger a divided by m omega m square which is greater than zero this makes sense physically because as the radiation pressure x to the right the hamiltonian is this particular hamiltonian uh, which we have started with this hamiltonian 
is also written in a little bit different form and in a the very familiar form you you are already aware we can write it as h is equal to h cross omega zero this is we are going to write in terms of the annihilation and creation operator of the mechanical oscillator so it would s cross omega m b dagger b and the optomechanical interaction part we can write as h cross z a dagger a uh, b plus b dagger this what i write while i have written it what we have used is this we have written use q the position coordinate uh, operator we write it as q0 b plus b dagger where q0 is the zero point fluctuation and this is h cross divided by twice m omega m under root and this capital z which is known as the optomechanical coupling constant or coupling parameter is z0 into the zero point fluctuation q0 let us now explore the eigenstates and eigenvalues of this hamiltonian eigenstates and eigenvalues firstly let me consider the case when there is no coupling between the optics and the mechanics if z is equal to capital z that's the coupling parameter is zero then uh, you will see that the number of photons as well as the number of phonons is conserved for this hamiltonian because you can see so very easily it's very straightforward if you just look at the hamiltonian here then the commutation relation between a dagger a and h this would be equal to zero and similarly you will get that b dagger b this commutation with the hamiltonian would be zero and that's why we say that uh, the phonon number as well as the photon number is a constant of motion and this conclusion i'm making based on this heisenberg equation you see from the heisenberg equation i have d a dagger a dt is equal to commutation between a dagger a h in fact here i h cross is also there so if this is equal to zero this implies that a dagger a is a constant of motion is a constant of motion or it's conserved and similar equation we can write for b dagger b so because of this it is easy to conclude that the eigenstates in this case when there is no coupling between the mechanics and the light mode the eigenstates are nothing but direct product eigenstates are simply uh, eigenstates are direct product direct product of product of the number states corresponding to photons and the uh, phonons and this we can write as n a this is for the cavity mode or the optical mode and n b which is for the mechanical mode or mechanics and this in shorthand notation let me write it as n a n b so this is the eigenstate now what about the eigenvalues it's very easy to work out eigenvalues uh, can be worked out just by uh, solving this eigenvalue equation so h n a n b is equal to say the eigenvalue is e n a n b it's energy so this is what we have to solve so first of all uh, let me put uh, the hamiltonian that is h cross omega zero a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b now here we are considering that capital z the coupling parameter is zero so now if we work it out a dagger a will operate on n a b dagger b this is the number operator operating on n b so we'll get simply h cross omega zero n a plus h cross omega m n b and this would be n a n b so clearly therefore we can write that e n a n e e n a n b the eigenvalue is simply h cross omega zero n a plus h cross omega m n b 
okay now what about what about the case when this z the coupling is non zero in this case then you can immediately see that the commutation relation between a dagger a dumbbell operator for the photo uh, cavity mode and the hamiltonian this is equal to zero but this commutation relation between b dagger b and the hamiltonian is not equal to zero so the it means that the optical number state is still an eigen state of the optomechanical hamiltonian but the mechanical number state is not okay so what you can say further is that since this particular term in the hamiltonian uh, this term in the hamiltonian now z is non zero corresponds to the displacement of the mechanical oscillator uh, due to the effect of the optical force so we may expect that the mechanical eigen state is a displaced number state let me write here again uh, the conclusion from this uh, uh, facts is that optical optical number state optical number state that is na we can say that is still is still an eigen state is still an eigen state of the hamiltonian but uh, nb is no longer eigen state of h uh but now we have this particular term based on which we can conclude or assume that because this corresponds to displacement this corresponds to displacement this whole term refers to the fact that displacement of the mechanical mode or the mechanical oscillator displacement of the mechanical oscillator uh by an optical force by an optical force and so we can say that mechanical eigen state this means that the mechanical eigen state eigen state is a displaced number state is a displaced displaced number state displaced number state and what i mean by that is our original number state is nb mechanical number state now it's get displaced when z is no longer zero therefore uh, by the way you know that this is the displacement operator and we have discussed about it earlier in module one it is e to the power alpha for the mechanical oscillator it would be e to the power alpha b dagger minus alpha star b uh, we can take alpha to be a real quantity then we can write it e to the power alpha b dagger minus b and this parameter alpha this parameter alpha uh, is to be determined and we'll see how it is to be determined it is to be determined and uh, actually what's the core idea here is that now we are considering our eigen state as na direct product of the number state for photons and the display state of the phonon uh, is our is our eigen state let us say psi so this is the eigen state we can assume let us now set the eigen value equation for z non is equal to not zero so in this case we can then set the eigenvalue equation in this form the eigenstate is na and direct product of the displaced the direct product of the number state for the photon and the displaced state of the mechanical phonon and this is equal to e n a n b and this e n a n b that i am writing is the eigenvalue but here 
don't get confused with the earlier ena enb that is here this is we have worked out for z is equal to zero but this ena let me actually put a tilde sign so that you don't get confused and this is what we now need to work out and uh, this is little bit uh, lengthy calculation but very straightforward let me tell you how to do that uh, we have to work out this equation first as we have done it for z is equal to zero case so hamiltonian here we have h cross omega zero a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b and now we have h minus h cross z a dagger a b plus b dagger so this is our hamiltonian it is operating on the number state and the displaced uh, mechanical state so we'll get from here because a dagger a will uh, it operate on this similarly this a dagger a will operate on any the uh, number state for the photon so uh, this will lead us to i will get a number because of that and na i can take it out you will understand once i write it you will have h cross omega zero this is just the number na plus h cross omega m b dagger b uh, minus h cross z this would be a number na and i have b plus b dagger and i have here d alpha and b this is what we have to work now work it out and we can work it out using these relations this maybe we can do it in problem solving session but it's very easy it is relation already we know from our module one d alpha d dagger alpha is equal to one and this also we know that d dagger alpha b d alpha is equal to b plus alpha and d dagger alpha b dagger d alpha is equal to b dagger plus alpha star so using these relations we can show that h n a d alpha and b is equal to n a d alpha and here we can show that this will get a term like this uh, expression like this we will have h cross omega 0 n a plus h cross omega m b dagger b uh, plus h cross omega m alpha minus h cross z and a it's the coefficient of b plus b dagger then we'll have terms h cross omega m alpha square minus twice h cross z n a alpha and here i have n b i encourage you to do this while we have done it uh, we take alpha is equal to alpha star alpha to be real now setting the coefficients of b plus b dagger as zero setting the coefficient coefficient of b plus b dagger term to be zero we can get the value of the parameter alpha we will get alpha is equal to z into n a divided by omega m now using this uh, value we can then have h n a d alpha n b this is our eigenstate for the system when z is not equal to zero this would be n a d alpha uh, in fact if you put the parameter uh, for alpha this value if you if you put it what you are going to get is let me just write down the final expression you will get h cross omega 0 n a plus h cross omega m n b minus h cross z square 
n square divided by omega m and you will have n a d alpha n b so this is your eigenstate and this is your eigenvalue right this is your eigenvalue so we recognize that the eigenvalue e n a n b when z is non-zero is equal to h cross omega zero n a plus h cross capital omega m n b minus h cross z square n a square divided by omega m so what we see here is this that the difference from z is equal to zero is this last term so this last term accounts for the sip from z is equal to capital z is equal to zero energy levels and it can be interpreted as the energy lost this can be interpreted as the energy lost energy lost uh, by the optical oscillator by the optical oscillator optical oscillator because the optical force because of optical force because it displays the optical force is spent in displacing the mechanical oscillator uh, given by energy lost by the os optical oscillator given by the product product as you can see here product of optical force optical force and optical force if you see that this is h cross z into n a this is the optical force and shift and shift in the mechanical equilibrium position and shift in the equilibrium position equilibrium position of the mechanical oscillator mechanical mechanical oscillator and this shift is given by the parameter alpha and alpha is equal to z n a divided by omega m so let me again uh, write this uh, thing um, so it clearly we have this last term as h cross z square n a square divided by omega m this i can write into two parts one term is h cross z n a that is the optical force and then we have this parameter alpha which is z n a divided by omega m and this is the displacement and this is the force so it has the dimension of energy overall so i hope you get the idea here. let me show you something very interesting now we can very easily get a useful form of the hamiltonian which will deliver uh, what we have just concluded about the energy eigenvalues we can use a unitary transformation known as unitary transformation known as polar return transformation as defined as up is equal to e to the power capital z by omega m a dagger a b dagger minus b and if we apply this unitary transformation to our hamiltonian uh, let me write down the hamiltonian once again so we have our hamiltonian h is equal to h cross omega 0 a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b minus h cross z a dagger a into b plus b dagger so if we apply this polar return transform this is called polar return transform if we apply it then we'll get a transform hamiltonian so we'll have up dagger up uh, we can work it out and several terms would be there first of all uh, let us for example quickly work it out up dagger a dagger a 
because this would be here as you can see from this Hamiltonian we have to apply it from both sides so it will up dagger a dagger a up and uh, here I have e to the power z by omega m uh, a dagger a and we'll have here it as b minus b dagger because this is b dagger minus b i am taking the up dagger so it is b minus b dagger and here a dagger a and here i have z by omega m a dagger a b dagger minus b all right so to work it out let us recall this uh, formula becker hoster formula e to the power a b e to the power minus a and this we know that this would be b plus uh, in fact we can put a lambda sign here lambda parameter there then it would be b plus lambda a b plus lambda square by 2 factorial a a b and so on if we apply uh, this particular formula uh, here then we will get it as our b is this this whole operator let us take so this is a dagger a then the second term would be uh, let me take the lambda parameter as z by omega m then operator a is here a dagger a b minus b dagger and here i have a dagger a and then we'll have the other terms now as you can see from this term um, okay let me write another line here a dagger a plus i have z by omega m i can take b minus b dagger outside then i have a dagger a a dagger a and rest of the terms and you know this is equal to zero and because the second term vanishes so all other terms will vanish and will be left out with only a dagger a okay so what we get is that up dagger a dagger a up is simply a dagger a in the similar fashion we can work out uh, terms like say up dagger b up which is e to the power z by omega m a dagger a b minus b dagger b e to the power z by omega m a dagger a i have here b dagger minus b if i work it out it's very straightforward to work it out if you do it you will get b plus z by omega m a dagger a okay and also you can get up dagger b dagger up and this will give you b dagger z by omega m a dagger a now putting all these results uh, in the hamiltonian uh, here okay we'll get our transform hamiltonian as this let me write the full expression then i'll simplify it i will get h cross omega zero a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger plus capital z by omega m a dagger a into b plus z by omega m a dagger a then we'll have a term like h cross z a dagger a b plus z by omega m a dagger a and i will have minus h cross z a dagger a b dagger plus z by omega m a dagger a 
if i open it up and then do the simplification then finally i will get h cross omega 0 a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b minus h cross z square by omega m a dagger a whole square okay now it is from this hamiltonian it is straightforward to get the expression for the energy eigenvalue and you will get it immediately the energy eigenvalue when z is non-zero capital this coupling is there between the optics and the mechanics you will have h cross omega zero n a plus h cross omega m n b minus h cross z square by omega m n a square okay now from here we see that the effect of the optomechanical interaction is to make the harmonic optical oscillator enharmonic and this form of because the harmonic oscillator is no longer linear harmonic oscillator it has become nonlinear and this form of nonlinearity is known as car nonlinearity or care nonlinearity it is called care nonlinearity and because of this optomechanical in interaction an optomechanical system is uh, known to be inherently nonlinear because of this and by the way maybe you know that a care medium is the one where the optical path length depends on the optical intensity uh, let us understand it a little bit more uh, from the uh, this Hamiltonian from this Hamiltonian we can get the equation for the optical mode and we can write a dot is equal to 1 by i h cross the commutation between a and this Hamiltonian and if you work it out uh, it will it will straight away you, you will get it as minus i omega 0 a plus i z square by omega m and you will get 2 a dagger a plus 1 into a uh, by the way let me quickly show you how i have arrived at this particular expression because i have to work out the commutation relation between a and a dagger a whole square so just let me show here a a dagger a whole square the commutation would be i can write it as a a dagger a a dagger a which can be broken down into two parts i have say a a dagger a a dagger a plus i have a dagger a a a dagger a and because a a dagger is equal to one okay from here you see i'll get a a dagger a plus a dagger a a now another thing i can do i can write a a dagger as a dagger a plus one into a plus a dagger a a from here you see that i will get two a dagger a plus one into a that's how i obtain this particular expression so therefore what i have here is a dot is uh, equal to i can write it as minus i omega zero minus z square by omega m twice a dagger a plus one this can be easily solved because we know that a dagger a that is the photon number is a constant of motion so we can easily write a solution for this optical mode and that would be a of t is equal to a of 0 e to the power minus i omega 0 minus z square by omega m twice a dagger a plus 1 into t let me again uh, tell you that a dagger a is a constant of is a constant of motion 
constant of motion or it is a conserved quantity so that's the reason i can express the solution in this particular form or in fact i can write it this way also a0 e to the power minus this frequency is slightly modified because of the presence of the coupling that is say minus i omega tilde t so this implies that the phase peaked by the light mode is equal to uh, propagation vector of the light field into l don't get confused with kappa this is simply k propagation vector which is equal to omega tilde by c into the refractive index into uh, length of the cavity if the refractive index is generally it is say one um, anyway so this is what the uh, phase is phase as seen by the light mode and you see that this phase uh, is determined by the optical frequency uh, omega 0 if capital Z is equal to 0 this is determined this phase is determined by omega 0 optical frequency if Z is equal to Z, okay it is Z is equal to 0 then this term would not be this particular term would not be there so you will have uh, when it is z is equal to zero for uh, coupling when the coupling is uh, there phase is also proportional proportional to the photon number photon number a dagger a as you can see uh, from this expression here right and that's the re and this photon number is again proportional to light intensity proportional to light intensity and as i said earlier that a car medium is the one where uh, the optical path length depends on optical intensity so far we discussed and ideal situation by considering the optical mode and the mechanical oscillator only now let us consider a realistic scenario by considering the external laser drive as well in this case the quantum hamiltonian would take this particular form so we have to add the external laser drive now so our hamiltonian is h cross omega zero a dagger a that takes the optical mode into account then we have this mechanical oscillator p square by twice m plus half m omega m square q square and then optomechanical interaction term is taken into account by this particular term minus s cross z0 a dagger a q the coordinate of the mechanical oscillator then this this uh, term that we are now adding is this the laser drive and this would be uh, this laser drive has amplitude omega drive and it is a dagger e to the power minus i omega l t omega l is the laser frequency and this particular term has to be hermitian so we are adding this term as well so this one we can also write in the in terms of the creation and annihilation operator of the mechanical oscillator and in that case it would become h cross omega zero a dagger a uh, plus h cross omega m now we have here b dagger b so this we are now replacing it by the creation and annihilation operator then here we'll have minus h cross capital z uh, a dagger a b plus b dagger um, by the way you may recall that this capital z is equal to uh, we have this q0 into z0 q0 is the zero point fluctuation and of course we are having this term also minus uh, plus i h cross omega drive a dagger e to the power minus i omega lt 
minus a e to the power i omega l t so these are the two forms of hamiltonian that we are now going to consider so let us say this is equation one and say let us this is equation number two so as we did in the classical regime uh, we can get rid of the explicit time dependence by going over to a frame of reference rotating with the laser frequency omega l which amounts to uh, applying a unitary transformation say u is equal to e to the power i omega l a dagger a t so if we make this unitary transformation then we will be able to get rid of this explicit time dependence that is there in the external drive term here and if we do that uh, basically our hamiltonian would get transformed into a new hamiltonian by this transformation that is h tilde this is the new hamiltonian it would be u h u dagger minus i h cross u del u dagger del t we have done similar things earlier so if you do that uh, make this transformation we will obtain h tilde is equal to minus h cross delta a dagger a plus p square by twice m plus half m omega m square q square then we have minus h cross z zero a dagger a q and we have i h cross omega drive into a dagger minus a so we are now getting rid of this explicit time dependence where this delta is the detuning parameter that is omega l minus omega zero uh, this we can write in terms of the creation and the annihilation operator as well so let me first term it as my equation number say three and we'll have here in terms of creation and annihilation operator of the mechanical oscillator i can rewrite this as minus h cross delta a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b uh, minus h cross z a dagger a b plus b dagger plus i h cross omega drive a dagger minus a so let me take it as my equation number four okay now let us consider the effects of surrounding environment on the model of this optomechanical fabric pero cavity so uh, to do that first uh, let us write the heisenberg equation uh, for various variables here various operators let me consider this equation three and from this equation we can write down the heisenberg equations for example uh, say we have this q dot q dot is equal to one by i h cross this q is an operator q dot position operator for the mechanical oscillator that would be qh if we it is very easy to calculate similarly we will have p dot is equal to 1 by i h cross uh, p h this we have to calculate and we know how to calculate a dot is equal to for the optical mode 1 by i h cross a h in fact it is h tilde here because we are now taking it in the uh, new transform hamilton in the new rotating form but uh, frame but now not so rather than writing it h tilde we'll uh, take it again write it as simply h so if we calculate it then we are going to get these equations for example for this optical mode we'll have a dot is equal to i into delta a plus i z zero q into a then plus omega drive and q dot is equal to p by m all these are operators so all of them are operators and then we have p dot 
is equal to minus m omega m square q plus h cross z zero a dagger a now based on our discussion on quantum langevin noise in previous lectures uh, we can now write down the following quantum langevin equation for the kvt optomechanics now we have to take into account the quantum uh, noise so incorporating incorporating quantum noise quantum noise we can write down these equations heisenberg equations as follows we have say q dot is equal to p by m we have p dot is equal to minus m omega m square q plus h cross z zero a dagger a minus now say the mechanical oscillator has damping it is represented by some gamma m so gamma m is the mechanical the mechanical damping mechanical damping and then we are having this langevin noise as well and for the optical mode we have a dot is equal to i delta and say it decays at the rate kappa by 2 amplitude decays at the rate kappa by 2 so we have this term here plus i z0 q into a okay all these are again operators and we have this omega drive and also we have this uh, vacuum fluctuation that is uh, has to be incorporated or has to be added so here a in is equal to a in tilde if you look at our uh, last class e to the power i omega l t and the noise terms has the noise terms have zero mean value so we'll have say a in expectation value of this noise would be it would be a in tilde t e to the power i omega l t and we can write it as expectation value of a in e to the power i omega l t and this is equal to zero so therefore this mean is zero and similarly the mean of this langevin noise is also zero on the other hand also we know that the corresponding time correlations for example for this input uh, noise from vacuum fluctuation the time correlation would be a in t a in t dash that is equal to delta t minus t dash you can refer to the previous class last class where we discussed all these things also uh, we have the correlation function in the frequency domain as well we have worked it out also there a in omega a in dagger omega dash is equal to 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash let me stop here for today in this lecture we have discussed the quantum mechanical hamiltonian for the kvt optomechanical system and we saw why a quantum optomechanical system is inherently nonlinear. Also, we have worked out the quantum Langevin equation in the context of a KVT optomechanical system. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss the linearized quantum optomechanics and also we will find out the quantum limit for the ground state cooling of an optomechanical system. So, see you in the next class. Thank you.